week will be for another time. But uh, today I have a special uh, message for us. Um, and so if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. We're going to start in verse 6 and we're going to kind of work our way through this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. If you're there, give me an amen. Amen. Whether you have your Bible in person or your tablet or your phone, um, we're going to open the Word of God together today. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in, or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Verse 10. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that it is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light to guide our path. We thank you that the word of God is powerful in here today. Lord, we ask that you would increase the word that you have prepared for us today, Lord. We ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Holy Spirit, would you cause me to say things and think of things that I did not prepare for this week so that the people could be edified, equipped, and empowered to do what you've called them to do. Holy Spirit, would you minister to us in these next few moments to draw closer to the throne of God, Lord. Our ears and our hearts and our eyes are open to see you today. So would you come and keep on coming? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This morning, I want to break down this passage of Scripture into four sections. Seeds, increase, harvest, and life change. The title of my message, if you're taking notes, is A Generous Life. A Generous Life. Seeds, somebody say seeds. Seeds. Increase. Increase. Harvest Harvest. and life change. change. The word generous means showing a readiness to give more of something as money or time than is strictly necessary or expected. Being generous could look different for everyone through different seasons of life. How many have gone through a season where you feel like you can be the most generous person in the world? Life's good. Things are happening. I'm going to be the most generous person with my time, with my talent, with my treasure. Whatever it is, I'm going to be the most generous person in this season. How many have felt like in different seasons you're not really able to be the most generous person that you really want to be? I want to talk a little bit about seeds and the power and the importance of seeds, but I first want to ask this today. What does a generous life look like to you? Is it helping those in need? Is it being present and consistent with people, fully able to love them from an authentic place because of it? Is it giving financial resources to something bigger than ourselves? Is it selfless dedication to serving others? I believe a generous life is where I recognize just how well God has blessed me. That then leads me in return to, be a, to, to a desire to be a generous giver in his kingdom. Living generously is living gratefully without worrying about getting something in return. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about seeds. Everything starts with a seed. Everything starts with a seed. The Bible says that he will give seed to the sower, not give seed to the holder. He will give seed to the sower. He won't give seed to the holder. Because if he gives seed to the holder, then you're going to keep storing up and stacking up seeds. I believe that maybe this morning we have seeds in our heart that God has planted over generation and generation. And he's saying, have you done anything to steward the seed that I've placed in your hands and in your heart? 
Some of us get a seed and we give the seed away. We're a sower. Some of us are a seed holder and we're saying, Lord, I don't know what to do with this seed. Can I tell you this morning that if you hold on to the seed, you're actually holding on to unbelief. Sowing is done with our hands. Holding is done with our unbelief. I'm going to say it again. Sowing is done with our hands. Holding is done with our unbelief. You can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. When I open an apple and I cut it open, I want to get all those seeds out. But I truly do not know how many apples are in one of those seeds. I don't want to eat the seeds because I'm going to have a thousand apples in my stomach. No, I'm just kidding. But you don't know how many are in a seed. I've come to recognize that we want the now before the faithfulness of stewarding the seed. Are we stewarding the seed with what God has placed in our hands? Or do we just want the now? I think we're living in a time right now, church, where we just, we want drive-by Christianity. We want drive-through. Jesus, help me right now or I'm out of here. I need you to do what I've, what I've, what I've given right now or I, I give up. Can I tell you that even in this place today, through 153, I might begin that number wrong, but somewhere around there, years of faithfulness, of seeds into this building of a miracle that we're sitting in today at Pleasant Hill. Years and decades, hundreds of years of seeds planted in this place for our butts to be sitting in these seeds that maybe we did not pay for, that somebody else sowed Decades Amen. ago. Amen. Our seed is powerful, family. Our seed transcends generations. It goes beyond what we see. It goes beyond what we see in the natural realm. It is, it is, it is something that we seed and sow into for what God is doing in this time, in this hour, that we might not ever see on this side of heaven. But can I tell you that our seeds make a difference? Right. That our sowing does things in heaven that only heaven can do today? Right. Right. We want life change, but we haven't planted the seeds first. On, seeds increase, harvest, life change. We want to jump right to the bottom and say, I want my life changed. But God's saying today, have you planted the seed first? We want the harvest, but we haven't believed for the increase with what has already been placed in our hands. I remember when we started this church, before we actually had our first service, what we did is we seeded into ministries that we believed in around the world and around the city. Every seed that came in before we even grabbed the first microphone for whatever came in that God blessed us with, we began to sow seeds, even if it was $25 of what we had, even if it was $100 of what we felt like was a million at the time, we'd give what what it had been given to us. We'd open the mailbox a week, two weeks later, $5,000 checks in there. Ministry saying, we believe in you. $2,000 checks saying, we believe in what you're doing. But how did they know that we sowed the seed? They didn't. But heaven knew. Heaven petitioned for us. Heaven went before us. Heaven said, I've trusted you with the small seed, and I'm going to increase that seed. And here we are today, family. Has it been peaches and roses to get to this point in four years? No, it hasn't. It's been years of stewarding the seed and that God's called us to do. God's looking for some seed sowers today in what he wants to do to advance his kingdom here on the earth. Amen. We got to recognize that a seed sown will later become a seed grown. We have to seed it before you see it. Somebody told me that years ago. You have to seed it before you see it. Faith precedes a miracle. That's right. If you want to see something happen in your life, begin to see it into something that is bigger than yourself. Amen. That's right. That is bigger than your comprehension. That is bigger than your way of thinking. You begin to precede a miracle in that which God's called you to live. Lord, I'm believing for this. I'm going to seed into that. Lord, I'm believing for this to happen in my ministry. Now I'm going to seed into that. Lord, I'm, happy, I'm believing for this to happen in my family. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pay for somebody else's diapers before I have my own kids. Come on. Come on. I'm going to 
I'm going to sow into somebody else. Even if I don't have the money, God loves a generous, cheerful giver today. Amen. Increase. You will see more come through your hands because the Lord trusts you. Verse 10 says that he will first provide. Say provide. provide. He will first provide. That's a given. He's going to do that. And then he'll provide increase. He brings the provision and then he'll bring the increase. I can provide something that you need. You can provide something that I need, but only God can bring the increase. Come on. I can physically provide something that you need today. If you need a new car, I can't do it right now, but I can probably provide something that you need. And you can probably provide something that I need. But only God brings the increase. Amen. There are seasons that we are required through the obedience to God to increase more of something. More of our time, more of our money, more of our resources, more of our faith, more of our energy for one thing. And that is to serve a purpose that we believe in. Amen. What do we believe in right now in this moment of our life? Where is our time? Where is our money? Where is our resources? Maybe it looks different for everybody here. Maybe you're spending all of your time and energy to bring your lost son or daughter home back into the kingdom. Yeah. Maybe you're spending everything that you have to make sure that your kids have the best life. Yeah. Maybe you're giving all of your time to the local church. Maybe you're seeding into financially the ministry that God's called you to be a part of. Each and every single one of us are in a different season of the capacity of sowing seeds and living a generous life in this time. Everybody, it looks different to everybody right now. But can I tell you, the body of Christ works together in the same purpose to see the kingdom of God advance. Some of us might be able to give all the time in the world but right now, financially, we can't give everything. But God trusts you with the seed. Right. Some of us might be able to give everything in the world, but we just cannot give the time. Can I tell you, it all works together with the same purpose. Amen. To see people come to Jesus in this lost and dying world. He will increase your territory as you increase your generosity. The Bible says if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. Mm -hmm. And if you sow blessings, you will also reap blessings. Luke 21, 1 through 4, you don't have to turn there, but one of my favorite passages of the widow's offering. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts into the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all of the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus. But she, as poor as she is, has given everything she has. No matter the amount, family, God sees the intent of the heart. Some of the greatest miracles I've seen in my life is when I didn't have hardly anything to give. Whatever season that was in. Maybe I didn't have the capacity of my time growing up, you know, serving in church. But I made it a requirement for me to make sure that I'm in the house of God before anything else. Even if my, if, even if my schedule was, was crazy that week, I said, Lord, I'm giving my time generously back to you. I choose to be at church for an hour on a Wednesday night. I choose to, to, to show up on a Saturday morning to an outreach when maybe I could be at home preparing even more for the message today. I choose to give generously my time because people are relying on what you have in your hands as a seed sower. That's right. Amen. It all works together. It all functions together. And God will get the reward 
all together. Generosity is not just revolved around money. It's a lifestyle of giving what's been entrusted to you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he what? Gave. He gave. God has been giving generously to us since the beginning. Since he sent Jesus, God has been giving to us. Since the foundation of the world, God has been giving. He's a generous, good, faithful God. Amen? Amen. Harvest, verse 10 in 2 Corinthians 9. Scroll down to verse 10. There will be a great harvest of generosity in you. Say in me. In me. Verse 11. Yes, you. Say me. me. Will be enriched, meaning improve in every way so that you can always be generous. Not sometimes, but always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Listen, it's good for us to be generous, but it's even better for others. Mm. Amen. It's good for us to be generous people, generous believers, but it's even better for others. I love seeing people blessed. I love seeing people come to faith. I love seeing a smile on somebody's face if you buy them a coffee and they didn't expect it. Or buying somebody's lunch. I love going to lunch with the people that like to fight over the bill. I'm not going to say on. any names in here. That's right. I love going to lunch with those people. Because you know you're at a table full of generous Come people on. that love to bless the family of God. That's right. I want to do better than that. I want to be that person that steps in and say, you know what? I can't really do it right now, but I know the reward of God. I can't really give another $26.93, but I know the reward of heaven when I'm a seed sower, when the increase of heaven is behind my back. I know what God can and will do. Here's a promise if you need some things shaken up in your life. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. If you need a refreshing, be prosperous, be generous, be prosperous. You will begin to be refreshed by the presence of the Lord. You begin to change the world around you through generosity. You show up when no one else can show up or nobody else wants to show up. You give when nobody else can. You encourage somebody who feels hopeless. The harvest of generosity goes far beyond what we will ever see in the natural realm. It will become so contagious. Generosity is contagious, family. Right. It's so contagious. Right. Let's talk about time for a minute. If I see two people showing up faithfully for something, I want to be the third. And I want somebody behind me to be the fourth. And behind them be the 10th and the 20th and the 30th. I want to give generously my time. If I see somebody sow a seed into the kingdom, I don't want to one-up them, but I want to sow as well. I want a seed as well. I want to say, Lord, this is what you've given me. I won't hold on to unbelief. I won't be a holder of my seed, but I'll be a giver of my seed. I'll be a sower of my seed. Can I tell you, God will reward that generosity in your life today. Generosity looks like kindness. It reflects love. It has an open hand. It's always ready. It shows gratitude. Generosity is a lifestyle. It is going beyond limitations. Generosity is our time. Generosity sees a need and fills a need. Generosity is God, our Father. Life change. Life change. You are never the same when you're generous. Did that sink in? It actually becomes who you are. One step of generosity can lead to hundreds of miracles of becoming who you are. Generosity, it might start off as an unknown task. It might feel like a task starting off, but it will bring transformation to your heart and whom God has called you to be. Generosity brings transformation, church. It brings transformation. 
Proverbs 11.24, if you turn with me there this morning, Proverbs 11.24, it says the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Who wants to be a part of the smaller and smaller? Nobody. Nobody. Who wants to be a part of the larger and larger? Amen. Amen. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. As I said in one of my first points, that as we are generous, God increases our territory. Our whole world begins to open up. Our whole life begins to be flooded with miracles because all of a sudden, God has trusted me to steward the seed in that which he's placed in my hands. The kingdom gets bigger when we're generous. The church gets better because we're generous. The church grows because we're generous. I want to be a part of a family that gives without limitations, that gives without any conditions, that gives to see lives changed by the kingdom and the power of God. Amen. Amen. I want to give something for people to talk about for the next 10 to 20 years. Think about that. Can we give somebody something to talk about for the next 10 to 20 years? I remember that church. Talk about us. Just making up a story. I remember that church when they had few. I remember that church maybe when they had little. But I remember that church for what they did with the vision that God had given them to see thousands change by the power of God 10 years later. Come on. Come on. That church, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. That church gave what? <laughs> that church did what? That's right. That's right. Amen. That church was able to build Come what? Amen. Come on. That church took territory where? Amen. That church had an open door in what? Congress building downtown? Come on. That church is able to have permits for what? Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost on this strong. Yeah. He's looking for the faithful few to steward the seed that he's placed in our hands. Mm. And as, as we say, it just starts with a yes. Our vision here is to be a church obediently saying yes to the call of God at all costs. It just starts with a yes. It just starts with a few. It just starts with a seed, family. I'm telling you what God's going to do. He's going to bring the increase that's going to blow the roof off this place. He's going to provide seed to the sower. We will reap bountifully. We will sow bountifully. We will see blessings. We will be a blessing. We will be a church like a city on a hill for this whole community to say that church is where God is. That church is where there's givers. That church is where there's increase. That church is where there's seed sowers. But can I tell you at the end of the day, that church is seeing lives changed by the power of God. That church is seeing baptisms filled every single week. That, per- that church is seeing souls saved for the kingdom of God. That church is filled with the anointing. That's the church that Christ wants to see in this hour. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place today. I hear the Lord saying that God did it for you. He's going to do it for them. Amen. For the lost, for the broken, for the people that might be homeless walking up and down these streets, God's going to do it for them too. Amen. And he's saying, be faithful with the seed. Don't write off people that might not look like you. Don't write off people that look like they're going through the worst time of their life. Be an encouragement. Be an uplifter. Be a prayer warrior to say, I know what God's done in me. And he wants to do it for you too this morning. Can I get an amen in here today? Generosity is eternal investment. Eternal investment. As we seed into the kingdom, we are seeding into eternity. Amen. How many know that the church, it takes money to see the kingdom advance? Amen. Well, God don't need my money. He needs your money. 
He needs your time. He needs your talents. He needs your giftings. He needs what he's placed in your hands to do what he's called this church to do here in this time and in this hour. On this side of heaven, we may never know the capacity of what our seeds did. But we invested to see lives changed by Jesus, who is the greatest hope. You can fill the need to somebody else's miracle. And people will thank God because of your generous heart. Generosity exposes the heart. It exposes the heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Let's go down to verse 12 of 2 Corinthians 9. One of the final verses we'll read today. You getting anything out of this this morning, church? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. And as a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient. Read that again. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you. Have you ever been given something and somebody back to you says, hey, I'm, I'm praying for you. Thank you. Thank you. I've received something before and I've said, hey, I want to pray for you with deep affection. Thank you so much. Thank you for this generosity in my life. Thank God for this gift. Too wonderful for words. Generous giving meets the material needs of others but also produces this one spiritual result. It's simple. Thanks to God. Thanks to God. It meets the material needs, but also produces a spiritual result. Thanks to God. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to to God. I want to deposit something this morning. One of your ministry gifts is giving and being generous. Amen. That's a ministry gift in the kingdom of God. Mm. Being generous in our giving. It says that the needs of the believers will be met. How many want to see their needs met in here? Amen. Amen. And there will be a joyful expression of thanks to God. Do we thank God with everything that he's given us and placed in our hands? Are we living with lives of gratitude and thanksgiving saying, Lord, what you've given me is not mine. It's yours. What you've placed in my bank account is not mine. It's yours. What you've given me in my family and my children is not mine. It's yours. Oh, gracious God, thank you for being generous to me. Gratitude unlocks generosity. It unlocks a, a giving spirit. It, it unlocks a, a heart to say, Lord, I'm giving it all back to you. Thank you for blessing me. I'm giving it all to you today, Lord. How many people have been given a gift that is literally too wonderful for words? Mm, amen. I hope everybody here. I pray everybody here. If not, it's coming. You have breath in your lungs today. That's a gift. Too wonderful for words. We're healthy. That's a gift. Too wonderful for words. We're able to meet in public to have church and not underground somewhere on the other side of the world. That's a gift. Too wonderful for words. It will prove one thing, that you and I are obedient to the good news of Christ. Generosity proves that we are obedient to the good news of Christ, that he truly is sticking to his word. 
The last verse states that they will thank God for generosity that is greater than words. Greater than words. When I receive something, I'm speechless. But when I also give something, I'm speechless. Because sometimes I'm like, Lord, are you sure? How many? We've all been there. Lord, are you sure? Are you sure? But he's saying, yes, you're being obedient to the good news of Christ, believing in the purpose that is far greater than yourself. Would you turn with me to Psalm 41, 1 through 3? Psalm 41, 1 through 3 as I close this morning. It says, God's promise to the generous. It says, blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sick bed. In his illness, you restore him to health. This is the covenant that exists between God and the generous. God responds to the kindness of generosity of his people with protection, health, and abundance. As I close this morning, think of those three things. Protection, health, and abundance. If any one of those things are lacking in your life, if you say, man, I've been sick, I need health, maybe be more generous. Lord, all this stuff's happening to me, I don't feel protected. Be generous. Lord, I feel like I don't have abundance in that which I really feel like I I need to have to do what I am called to do. Are we being generous? Listen, I'm up here preaching to myself this morning. Whether the room's full or empty, I'll always do that. But those three things I believe today that God wants to say is is the promise of my son Jesus of being generous, truly planted in our hearts to be obedient in the good news of Christ, to show the world that he is the son of God. I want to challenge us today. I want to leave us with this question. What does generosity look like for us this week? Think about it. Pray about it. Leave this place today wondering what that is. What does generosity look like for us today? Would you stand with me this morning as we close the service? Hey, thank you for tuning in to the Capital City Church YouTube channel. We'd love for you to subscribe so that you know when we post new content. Make sure to leave us a comment and let us know what spoke to you today, where you're watching from, and what can we pray for you about. And if you'd like to support the ministry financially, you can click the Give button now and help us continue reaching people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.